So one of my previous videos, I talked a little bit more about how you can potentially use console logs to debug your Node.js application. So I showed you like a little example application that is reading from a file and counting up the number of characters in that file. And I showed you how you can basically put a bunch of console logs to figure out where in that code there was an unresolved promise. And this is actually something that happens a lot in code, right? You will be dealing with promises, async await, and maybe you forgot to resolve one of your promises, or there's some type of execution that's kind of stuck in an infinite loop if you're doing a for loop or a while loop. So this is a good like use case and it's good to understand how to debug that. But someone on my Discord, by the way, if you're not part of my Discord, be sure to go to the description and join my Discord if you want to kind of talk directly to me and ask me questions. But someone asked me why I couldn't just use the debugger in that case. And that was a valid question because in most instances, you could use a debugger for everything. And as a beginner, I would highly recommend that you learn how to use the debugger well because it helps you understand the flow of code and how things are being changed in your variables. But as someone who's more experienced, I don't need to know how the code flows. All I really need to know is like, where exactly is that bug happening? And 80 or 90% of the time, I can do a good estimated guess of where that code is. So I really just need to throw a couple of console logs, maybe one or two or three, to really figure out where stuff is failing. But in some cases, and this video is kind of cover that, we want to use the debugger. And I want to show you a quick overview of how you can use the debugger to find this same unresolved promise bug that we kind of showed in the last video. But before I dive into showing you how to use the debugger, be sure to click that like button because it helps my channel grow. Also be sure to click the subscribe and bell icon if you want to get more videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer or software engineer. So let's just go ahead and dive over to the code and I want to show you how you can potentially use your debugger to debug Node.js applications. So like in the previous video, we have a file here and this file is basically going to read in two arguments. So it takes in a character and it also takes in a file. And basically what this does is it reads in the file using the file system module in node and it counts all of the instances of that character here and gives you back how many it found. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward program and if you can't build this by yourself, I recommend that you actually try to build this yourself without looking at my code, but let's just try to figure out what's going on here. So, all right, so let's first just kind of show you the application and what it's gonna do when I try to run it. So right now I did add in a infinite loop into the code to make it so it kind of simulates it not resolving a promise. For some reason, if you try to just make a promise and not resolve it in Node, it just like continues on. I don't know if Node maybe has some type of like optimization that happens that doesn't actually force promises to get stuck if you don't call the resolve function. But let's just go ahead and run this. Notice here, if you run this, the application is just stuck. It's not doing anything and we need to figure out why it's not progressing. So this is again, something that you might run into a lot in a production system because we deal with async awaits a lot. We deal with promises and we deal with waiting for those promises to resolve. And if you forget to call your resolve method, then your application is just gonna lock up like this. So what I'm gonna show you is how to actually debug this using the debugger instead of console logs because sometimes using the debugger can actually help you out. So in VS Code, one way you can do it is go to the left over here and click on this debugger and go ahead and click create a launch.json file. The reason we have to create this is because this program requires two arguments, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click create a launch.json and I'm going to click node. And over here, I believe there is a place that you can add in arguments. I think it's just like right here. I can say like args. And then I believe that takes an array of values. I could be wrong. I need to kind of refresh my memory, but I'm going to pass an A and I'm going to pass in file.txt. So that's going to be very similar to how we ran it in the command line, but now we're telling VS Code these are the arguments you need to pass in. All right, so if I go ahead and just click launch program, you'll notice that it doesn't really do anything. It's kind of just stuck. And the reason again is because we have that unresolved promise. So let me show you how you can use a debugger to try to figure this out. So what you can do is you can put a breakpoint on any of these statements. And then we can slowly dive into the code to figure out what's going on. So I'm just going to start with the first line here and put a break. But sometimes it's useful to also put breaks inside of functions that you think might be causing the issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one right inside this main function. And let's just go ahead and stop this and go ahead and rerun it like so. And I know my head's blocking some of the stuff, but really the most important thing about this process is the step functions at the top. So at the top here, you can actually continue your program which is going to say just run it like normally until it hits another breakpoint. You can say step over every line one by one, which is probably what we want. And you can also step into function calls if you want to. So those are like the main ones you can use. And then also step out allows you to kind of get out of the call stack and go back up a level. So let's just go ahead and keep clicking step over. And you'll see our debugger kind of walk through every line one by one. 
And this is a little tedious. I mean, you can kind of do this and it really helps you understand what's going on behind the scenes. But again, we're trying to figure out where does this program just lock up? Where does it stop running? So what I could do is just keep on clicking next until we get inside that main function. And I should be able to just click next and then click next. And notice at this point, the application just seems to stop, right? So I think we found where the issue is, which happens to be this count characters method. So what you can do now is you found the issue and the next step is how do you actually fix the issue? Why is it crashing or why is it failing? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop these debuggers here and I'm gonna put a debugger right on this line right here and click on this restart. So by clicking the restart and removing those debugger lines, it's gonna take us back to the exact same line, but it's not gonna actually call that function call yet. So again, the debugger is really useful if you need to kind of get that line by line feedback of what's going on in your program. As you get more experience, you just need a couple of console logs to figure out what's going on probably. But let's go ahead and dive into the function. So there is a method here, like this arrow that's pointing down. That means dive into the function and that's gonna take us directly to that count characters function. So you can see here we have a function that's returning a new promise and it has a resolve and a reject and a callback. And you can see here there's a while true loop. Obviously this is just put in here to kind of show the issue, but you can imagine if you actually have real logic and the logic is not properly coded, it might just become an infinite loop, right? So what we are gonna do is basically just put some more debugger statements in here just to make sure that we can find where the issue is. And we are just going to go ahead and click on step into as well. And that should take us into that function. And notice that the while true is actually just stuck now. So again, we found the issue is this while true loop, but you can do more investigation if you have a more complex code base. So what I would do here is just go ahead and stop the program because it's kind of stuck and just go ahead and comment out this line and make sure that we can kind of get to that next line if we just remove that. Okay, so go ahead and click this run button. That'll take us to the next breakpoint and go ahead and click this step out. That should kind of take us back up to the main program here. And we get to this console log here and you can see that count is set to three now. So everything is working fine. And if we go ahead and click step over, that should print out a console log to the debugger terminal, which for some reason I have lost it. I don't know where it went. So I had to go up here and click debug console to make sure it shows up down at the bottom. So now notice that it prints out we found three in the file. And that is kind of how you can kind of debug your code using the debugger. Again, this is like a really simple example and a quick overview, but this is one of the most powerful tools you can use when you're a beginner because it's really hard to keep all this stuff in your head, right? You have a lot of variables, a lot of functions, there's a lot of call stack going on. There's a lot of code flow that going on that you might not fully understand. And if you can step through your process line by line and understand what's going on, it'll be really beneficial to you. So I wanna to touch on like a couple of more points that I didn't really mention. And that is, if I go ahead and just rerun this program, I wanna show you some of the things on the left because these are really important to understand. And I don't wanna end this video without kind of sharing a little bit about those. I can kind of go into a more in-depth debugger video if that would help you all, let me know in a comment below. But I wanna show you on the left, you have this local stuff. So this kind of declares all your local and global variables. And when you're running node off the bat, you're given like a bunch of different global methods you can do like set timeout, clear timeout. But usually what you're interested in looking at is your local variables. And if you step through your program, you'll notice that as you step through, your variables change over here. So notice care changed to an A. And if I look at file, which is here right now, it's undefined. But if I step over again, you'll notice that file actually becomes file.txt. So this is super useful to kind of step through and understand how your things are being set up. And another really important thing to understand is how do you set up watches? So watches, if you double click on the variable here and right click on it, and I can go down here, I believe there is an add watch. So down here, there's an add to watch. So let's just go ahead and add that variable to watch. And right now it's not defined because we haven't gotten to that code. But if I go ahead and click the run button, at some point the execution is gonna get past that statement. And now we can actually see that variable change. So the watch thing is really useful if you just wanna like keep track of a very specific amount of variables. And I believe you can also just right click on some of these variables here and add them to watch as well. So right click on count, you can add to watch if you want to. Go ahead and click next and notice that the count should get changed at some point. Let me just go ahead and step out and step out. So the count is set to three and I can kind of keep track of what's going on. So those are really important aspects of using the debugger. There's also a call stack thing. If you wanted to kind of get into that, um, that's a little bit more advanced, but it kind of tells you like what function you're currently in. And I can just show you that real quick. If I were to go back into this count characters and add a 
breakpoint here. I'm going to stop and I'm going to rerun this program. Again, the call stack is, is a little bit more advanced, but it's kind of good to understand like what it's doing. So let's just go ahead and run the program and run it one more time. And the program is going to stop right here at this resolve statement. But notice that in your call stack, you can kind of dive in to understand like what is going on. So right now, this is the current line that we're on. It's an anonymous function, but you can kind of go back up the stack and figure out how do we get to this function, right? So this anonymous function was caused, called by this count characters function. The count characters function was invoked by a main function on this line. And then this main function was invoked on, by an anonymous function on this line, right? So you can kind of go up and down the stack and kind of view how the variables might be changing in that stack. So really useful to kind of, you know, play around with, understand what the purpose of these things are and how very powerful they can help you debug. But honestly, like I said, when you become more advanced, you don't use the debugger that often. You know you just need to throw a couple of console logs. Maybe you know exactly what object you need to log out to see what property might be undefined or defined improperly. And that's about it. Add a console log, restart your server, test it, you get your information. It's a lot quicker feedback loop than using the debugger. But I do use this a couple of times when I'm trying to debug really esoteric issues. So if you enjoy using the debugger more than console logs, leave a comment below, let the world know. Also be sure to give my video a like if you enjoyed watching this content because it helps my channel grow. And like always, if you're new to this channel and you're new to programming, be sure to subscribe and press that bell icon if you want more videos like this in the future. It should hopefully help you become a better web developer. Have a good day and happy coding.